Let me say good morning to you. It is 1040 on the dot. Looks like my internet was giving me a bit of trouble. So hopefully everything has cleared up at this point. I believe it has. I pray everybody is doing well and getting ready to celebrate on Mother's Day on today with your mothers and wives and grandparents and things of that nature. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And as you log on, we'll dive in together. Uh, we have some new things we're going to do this morning. We try to keep it fun. Oh, woo, almost knocked something over. Lord have mercy. Try to keep it fun and light on a holiday and a special day like this. So we're just praying that everything is going well with everyone. Uh, for those that don't know me, my name is Rodney Smith Sr. I'm the pastor of New Hebron Missionary Baptist Church, where God has blessed me to be now uh, for over 14 years. So let's go ahead and get started. Some of y'all, y'all probably going to be going to all these restaurants out here. God bless you. Make sure you get there early and get there, get yourself seated because it is going to be packed. Tidwell, good morning to you, old Jamario. Sheila Spearman, good to see you. And somebody put it, Sheila, put an APB out on your sister Carla. Hadn't seen Carla in probably two and a half years. Lord have mercy. You tell Carla I said hello. Let's go ahead and get started here in just one second. I uh, want to see how things are going to go for us this morning. We're going to do something different. Anybody have any big plans? Mother's Day? What's going on, cuz? Anybody have any big plans on Mother's Day? Who's going out to eat? And things of that nature. I'm sure there's going to be some visits and phone calls and texting going on. I want to know who's cooking. Tanya, you cooking over there? Sheila, you cooking? We'll find out here who's going to be putting some food down. Sister Timms, what you cooking this morning? Well, no, I guess you're not cooking on Mother's Day, are you? So I guess I guess the, the, the husbands and everybody else is going to be cooking today. Sister Turner, good morning to you. I'm sure we're going to have quite a few people cooking today, so... Go ahead and get yourself ready. Tanya, you said you're not cooking. No cooking for you, huh? No cooking for you. Ted John, he's going to have to break out the grill. He's going to break out the grill. Uh, or it's going to be a lot of Uber Eats, Bite Squad, DoorDash, all that stuff going on. They're going to be busy today. Get me in my face. We'll see. Ordering food, hey. You better put your order in now. I wish Sunday's best would do the salmon again. And y'all pray for me because I used to say salmon so much. And some of my... <laughs> uh, anyway, it's not salmon. It's salmon. The L is silent. So, yeah, we'll see who, who's cooking today. Everybody's ordering out. Okay. I guess that's not bad either to order out. Uh, oh, the lamb chops were good. Yes. The lamb chops were definitely good. I'm sure we're going to have some Sunday's best going on in some houses out there too. We're going to have some Sunday's best. I know that for a fact. So let's go ahead. We got about a minute. It's 1044. We got one minute before we begin. And we're going to do something different as we normally do. I don't know. I'm going to my mother's house. I've ordered a, a, a big box of chicken from Kroger. And if they did it right, they should be cooking it right now. So I'm taking a big box of fried chicken and and. We'll try to get some sides and everything, go to mama's house. Now, here's going to be the tough part. She's not going to let me lay on the couch because she got this fancy leather couch now. She don't want you laying sideways on it. She don't want to mess it up. So I'll probably end up making some pillows <laughs> on the floor and sleeping on the floor after I eat up all the chicken I'm taking over there. So I hope everybody else is going to be having a good time. Lord knows I will be. But, uh, yeah. So the Brittany Davis, I know you cooking. 
You cooking over there? Let me see. Sister Verdi Davis, good morning. We're going to have to order you a pizza. That wouldn't be right. That wouldn't be right. Not on Mother's Day. It's, it's 1045. It's 1045. Now, y'all, I want y'all to get your pen and your paper ready. Let's have us a word of prayer. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, as we come together again, we still want to be mindful to thank you, to praise you, and to worship you. Lord, we pray that you can help us as we have this time together to remember to put you first. Thank you, Lord, for all of our mothers, grandmothers, all of the mother figures that we've had for the ones that have sacrificed for us, provided for us, disciplined us, loved us. Father, we thank you for them, for putting them in our lives, the ones that took time to teach us your word, to pray for us, pray with us, to teach us, Father, morality and biblical uh, ethics. We ask you to please help us to stay with you. In Jesus' name we pray. And they all said, amen, amen, and amen. I'm going to need your help. Who has a pen and some paper? Or you may not need pen and paper. Uh, we do have a scripture we're going to go over. But before we get there, let's have some fun just for a few moments. And we're going to go over a couple things. Then we're going to have a brief lecture. And then we're going to make sure everybody makes it to the restaurant or everyone can come to your house and be there in time uh, to be with you on today. Got some stuff going on with the phone here. So I want you to put down. I'm a, I, guess, I guess I can type this too, can I? I don't know. I guess I can't. I want you to put down your mother's favorite color. Your mother's favorite color. Write down. See who knows that. Type it in here. Put down your mother's favorite color. And I want to see what we have this morning. Or maybe your mother doesn't have a favorite color. And it may take a second for me to see the answers depending on network speed and internet speed and all that stuff. I can type it in chat. Okay. Yeah, type it in wherever, wherever I can see. Orange, okay. Orange, Cleveland Brown fan. <laughs> blue, 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 God bless you. I see purple. Mother's favorite color was blue. All color, all right. I'm kind of like that too. I see that, Sister Brittany David. Oh, hunter green. Oh, okay, she into the camouflage or maroon. I don't know if I have a favorite color. Could I say black? Does that sound bad? Black and gray? Sound depressing, but I don't know. Favorite color, we see that. Mercedes red. <laughs> so we see red. I see all of these popping up. Mother's favorite color. We got some good things to choose from. All colors, the, the whole spectrum. We see that. Black, yeah. I thought I was the only one because it's like, I guess black, that's what I want to say. And so the next thing I want you to put down as we move forward, if your mother had one, what is her favorite hobby? Is it planting? Is it working in the garden? Uh, is it fishing? Uh, what is the favorite hobby? Reading books? Favorite hobby for your mother? Cooking, was it cooking? Maybe baking? You know, some people have those special recipes, homemade recipes that, that are very, sewing, quilting, sewing, things of that nature. Cooking, I can see that, Sister Brown. Ashley Brown, cooking is a good one at that house. I know that. Gardening. Mm. Not many people still have, uh, not many people still have a garden. My grandmother had a garden and, uh, yeah, we used to play in the ears of corn, and she didn't like that. So the favorite hobby, I think we said fishing, we got reading, we got cooking, we got gardening, we got spending money. Okay, as long as you have money to spend, you can keep that hobby going for as long as you want to. Now, was your mother a sports fan? And if she was, what was her favorite team? 
Now, that's a good one. Sports fan. Was she a sports fan? If not, we understand. May or may not have been. Many are. Some are not. If she was a sports fan, what was her favorite team? Or you could put, what was her favorite sport? Either one. Basketball, football, <laughs> ice hockey, tennis, baseball, you know, college basketball. Who knows? Is it pro or college basketball, Sister Brittany Davis? We'll see. Or just both of them. Only when Leon's were playing. That's the only time she likes sports. I see that. I love that. I like the Lakers. That is my team, by the way. LeBron finally got some sense. I see Sister Brittany Davis, both of them. Sister Verdi Davis, not a sports fan at all. Packers, okay. I see the football, okay. The Packers. Razorback, Cabo, all sports, okay. Okay. My favorite, my favorite sport is football, NFL football. Followed by college basketball. Closely followed by or equal to tennis. I can watch tennis all day. I can watch tennis all day. Doesn't matter who's playing. I took tennis lessons at 12 years old and it just stuck with me. I know how hard it is to play tennis. And when I see these guys serving the ball at 100 miles per hour, I couldn't do that. I know that. So we see the favorite teams, we see favorite sports, and all these things. Now, last one before we get to some other questions. What is your mother's, or what was, is your mother's favorite TV show? Or was it a favorite TV genre, like cowboy movies or something like that? Or was it soap operas, any one of them? Or did she have a favorite show? You know, was it cartoons? Was it... You know, whatever. I know we got some gun smoke saints out there. Some riflemen saints out there. I used to love the riflemen. My grandmother, she loved it. Golden Girls. Woo! And y'all don't judge me. Golden Girls was funny. Golden Girls was funny. The riflemen, that's a good one. Different world. Okay. Different world. I see that. Different world. Favorite TV show. I'm going to see who got this. The Rifleman was a good one. It starts off with him shooting that rifle real fast. Gun smoke. No Andy Griffin. No Jeffersons. <laughs> no Good Times. Sanford and Son. Mm. Mystery. Matlock. Mm. That's another good one. I see that. So the Tim Mystery, yeah. Living Single. That's another good one. I like that. Living Single. Anything on Hallmark. Yes, Lord. Hallmark a lifetime. Somebody crying. Somebody sick. Somebody separate. Oh, Lord. Hallmark a lifetime. Both of those channel. The anti-men anti -men channel. That's what we, Walker, Texas Ranger. I like that. What else? Woo, Walker, Texas Ranger. Oh, Chuck Norris, something else, ain't he? Walker, Texas Ranger. Yeah, and you can put this for your mother or you can do it for your wife if you want to or an aunt, just whatever. You can put that on there. I see soap operas. I watched soap operas as a kid. The summer between 7th and 8th grade, Sister Verdi Davis, I stayed home the whole summer to watch my sisters. And we just had Channel 4, 7, 11, maybe Channel 16, or UPN, we just had four or five channels. And I got into looking at the young and the restless. And Victor Newman faked his death and was hiding. And I got to looking at all my children. I remember somebody named Tad. <laughs> I'm a kid looking at soap operas. And I got into it. I see how people can do it. General Hospital was the last one. Because when General Hospital went off, if I remember, that's when cartoons came on. General Hospital was at two or three, something like that. Lord have mercy. So, yeah, yeah. Now, we talked about our mothers. Now, let's talk about some of the mothers of the Bible. And I want to see who has their biblical helmet on tight this morning. Whose mother was it 
that put them in what's called an ark of bulrushes and put them in the Nile River to keep him safe? Whose mother put them in a basket on the Nile River to keep them from being killed? It's in Exodus chapter 2, but whose mother was it that put to, to, to keep her baby boy safe? And they talking about killing all these babies. Whose mother put them in that basket, the ark of bulrushes? So oh, we got to keep this boy safe. So we'll see. Looks like we all are on the same page here. I'm giving you hints. You can go to Exodus chapter 2, you know. And so, yeah, that was Moses' mother. She put him in there to keep him safe. He was found by Pharaoh's daughter as his sister watched walking the banks. When Pharaoh's daughter found Moses, saw his sister, said, hey, take him back to his mama. And when he's of age, bring him here to me. I'll raise him in my house. So we can see how God was working with Moses. But it was the mother of Moses that said, I'm not going to kill my son. She put him in the ark of bulrushes, a basket, sealed it with what's called slime and pitch. She waterproofed it so it wouldn't sink and put him in the Nile River. Just going to watch him because I'd rather this happen than to kill my own child. Who is the mother? What was her name? The mother that prayed for a child in the temple at Shiloh. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 1. This was a mother who prayed for a child. Her adversary, Panina, had a child with her husband, Elkanah. She was the second wife. And I don't feel like going into a whole lesson about how polygamy was still wrong, but God still used it. Point being, what was the mother's name who prayed for a child in the temple at Shiloh? Her husband's name was Elkanah. She had a son by the name of Samuel. But what was the mother's name? She prayed for Samuel and God gave her that baby boy. And she said, Lord, you gave him to me, but I'm going to give him back to you. What was that mother's name? Now, if you don't get it, I'll give you multiple choice here in a minute. If you don't get it, I'll give you some multiple choice. <laughs> if you, I don't see any names coming up. This is 1 Samuel chapter 1. I see a question mark with it. I think she's asking me. I don't know. I don't, I'm asking you. You tell me. Hannah, okay, we see that. We see one guess. It wasn't Panina. I tell you that. It sure wasn't Elkanah. He's a man. He can't have children. So Hannah and Hannah is correct. It was Hannah who prayed. Yeah, reading it now. It was Hannah. Her adversary, Panina, would throw it in her face. And she was so sad. Her husband, Elkanah, he said, aren't I better than having 10 sons? And she went to church and prayed. She prayed so long. The prophet Eli thought she had been drinking. Girl, what's wrong with you moving your lips? Ain't no words coming out. You been drinking? No, no, no. She prayed and he said, hey, be it done unto you. Let God give you what you want to have. I pray that he does. And they went home from church that day, conceived a child. She brought him back to the temple and dedicated him to the Lord. And she let Eli raise her son, Samuel. He became a prophet in Israel. And it was that same prophet, Samuel, that the people came to him and said, give us a king like the other nations. Samuel was hot. He was hotter than fish grease. And he wouldn't prayed about it. And God said, Samuel, what you mad for? They haven't rejected you. They've rejected me. So it was Hannah. That was the mother who prayed for a child in the temple at Shiloh. Another question. Check your history books. Check your Bible. Who was the first mother on earth? I'm not even going to give you multiple choice on this one. Who was the first mother on earth? I want to see what we're going to say here. Depending on the internet speed. Who was the first mother on earth? I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all y'all flood me with this one. I think I think we all got this one. No trick question. No trick question. No trick question. Mercedes, it was easy. That's right. I see that. No trick question. No trick question. That is correct. Eve, 
She was the first wife. She was the first woman. She was the first mother. So Eve, that's right. She was the first one on earth. Now, here we go. This one, you're going to have to dig. You may, you may, you may not have to dig a little bit. What was the name of the wicked mother? She was carnal. She was wicked. She was evil. She got her daughter to dance seductively in front of King Herod because she wanted John the Baptist's head on a charter. Who was the mother that told her daughter to go in there and dance for the king? And when he asks you what you want, you tell him you want John the Baptist to be beheaded. I'll give you a hint. It's in Matthew chapter 14. I'll go that far. But what was the mother name who enticed her daughter to dance seductively for the king to get a favor from him? And that favor was to have John the Baptist killed. What was the name of that mother who did that? What was her name? I know, I know. Somebody Googling, somebody going to Matthew 14 and speed reading, or it may be a few answers on the way. What was the mother's name who did that to her daughter and told her to go before the king? I kind of turned this one up a notch right here. I'm going to see if y'all got it. I'm going to see. I'm going to see if we're going to get this one. Matthew chapter 14. I see the first answer. I see the second answer. I want to see. Third answer. Look like everybody getting it correct. Looks like everybody getting it correct. She got her dog, girl. You going there? And she danced for the king. He said, girl, listen. I give you every anything you want up to half my kingdom. Which is hyperbole. He didn't mean that specifically. But it was Herodias. We can see the negative influence her mother had on her and had her to entice the king in that way. I think that's all the answers we're gonna get. All those are correct, so I can't argue with that. Now we do have one more, two more actually. John the Baptist, since we're speaking to him. What was his mother's name? What was the name of John the Baptist's mother? What was her name? Ooh, the next one, next one gonna be tough. John the Baptist, he had a mother. Who was his mother? The name of John the Baptist. Y'all remember the Christmas story? We read it every year. Many of us, I'll say. The name of the mother of John the Baptist. I see Elizabeth going once, going twice, okay. The name of John the Baptist's mother. I see it three times. Elizabeth is right. Elizabeth is right. Now, the next one. You may know it. Ah, I don't know if I should give multiple choice or not. The next one, you may know it. Joseph in the Old Testament. Joseph, what was his mother's name? Genesis chapter 30. Was it Jennifer? Was it Shaniqua? Or was it Rachel? <laughs> what was Joseph's mother's name? Jennifer, Shaniqua, or Rachel? Y'all tell me. And we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Who was Joseph's mother, according to Genesis chapter 30, verse 25? But who was his mother? I want to see. <laughs> no Shaniqua's, huh? Okay. I'm just checking. No, no Jennifer's. Didn't find the Jennifer in the Bible. I wanted to. I wanted to, I wanted to see who was going to pick Jennifer. Or who was going to. Who was going to put Shanique? You know, good and well, it wasn't no Shanique. Yeah, I don't even know how you spell it, but we'll take that. We get it. We get it. <laughs> we get it. And last question, and then we're going to go into our lecture for this morning. What mother.
saw her son hanging on the cross. What was the name of the mother that saw her son hanging on the cross? I probably don't have to go into too many details for that. The name of the mother that saw her son hanging on the cross. And I'm sure all of us will get that. And as you get that, turn to John chapter 19 and verses 27. John 19 and 27. Yeah, it was Mary. John 19 and 27. And I've preached this before, and it, it, it means a lot to me. All of God's word does. But what we find in John 19 is Jesus has reached the end. Uh, at this occasion, his hour had come. When Jesus says, my hour has not yet come, my hour has not yet come, he means the hour or the moment, the space in time to where they're going to crucify him. Pilate has washed his hands. The Jews have said, give us Barabbas, crucify Jesus. Jesus has been scourged. He's been beaten. He's gone through the illegal trials from judgment hall to judgment hall. Pilate has no way to get out of this except for to give the Jews what they want. The Bible says it this way, that he came unto his own and his own received him not. Jesus had to carry his cross down what is called the Via Della Rosa, the Via Crucia. It means the way of the cross. The Romans would make the crucified, the people to be crucified, they would carry the cross beam of the cross. Sometimes they would carry the entire cross. But because they had been beaten and scourged and the loss of blood and strength, it would be difficult for them to carry their cross. The cross beam, a, a beam of wood to hold a human body would be very substantial. It would be a huge amount of weight. Jesus has been laid down, nails in his hands, a nail piercing through his feet into the wood, a crown of thorns upon his head and pressed it down. They put a sign over his head that says, here is the king of the Jews. They lifted him high on the cross. He's hanging between two thieves. And out of all the people who were with him that fled, Peter's not there. The other disciples are not there. But we can see that his mother Mary was right there at the cross. The foot of the cross was approximately, and it's hard to gauge historically, but the crosses were not tall, as you've, as you've heard me say, like telephone poles. People were way up in the air. I mean, why would we waste that kind of wood? The foot of the subject was sometime five to six feet off the ground. And Mary, she's at the cross. Mary is watching her son suffocate. Crucifixion, after they would scourge you, whip you with that whip that had bones and stuff in it, they would beat you, they would scourge you, it would be like softening you up to, cru to be crucified. They hit Jesus in the face with a bat, with a reed, they spit in his face, they pulled his beard, they nailed him to a cross, and they would have a platform under your feet because you would become so tired, your body would sink down. And as you would sink down, it would make it difficult to breathe because your body, your chest and lungs will be, begin filling with fluid. So to be able to breathe, you will push up on the platform, actually pushing up on the nail that's in your feet. And it would allow you to breathe, but it will put excruciating pain on the nail that's going through your feet. And as you go through the up and the down, the open wounds on your back from being scourged would be aggravated against the wood. And as Jesus was there at the cross, Mary was at the foot of the cross. And what Mary could do, Jesus, when he spoke, it wasn't loud, booming voices. He was God. He was God in the flesh. So 
He wasn't speaking with the strength and boldness of my voice. He was speaking from someone who's lost a lot of blood, who's in pain and agony. But Mary was close enough to the cross to where she could smell the sweat, smell the blood. She could see the child that she carried for nine months, knowing he's a unique boy, a special boy, conceived in the womb by the Holy Spirit. She did not leave his side. There were men who were strong, who had swords, who were trained, that walked with him for three and a half years. They're gone. Mm -mm. Peter ain't there. Peter says, quit preaching. Peter's done. We see Christ call him back in the uh, next chapter. But Mary is there. That says something about a mother. That says something about a mother. Y y yes, we know as a, as a parent, we all love our children. But the first teacher you had was a mother. The first trainer you had was a mother. The first nurse was a mother. In many cases, and I'm speaking just in general terms, and I don't say this to be negative, but there's bad fathers, there's bad mothers too. But for the most part, when a man don't stay around, when a man checks out, when a man says, I don't want nothing to do with this, there's a woman that stays there with that child. You, 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 go on with your bad self. You ain't got to send me nothing. I take care of him by myself. There's a woman. And that's Mary staying by her child, Jesus. And as she's there, she's heard him speaking. And Jesus says, and I said verse 27, I meant verses 26 and 27, pardon me. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, verse 26, at the foot of the cross and the disciple standing by whom he loved, which is John, John the apostle, not John the Baptist. He said unto his mother, woman, behold thy son. Then he said to the disciple, John, the disciple whom he loved, behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her into his own home. It is now understood from these two verses that Joseph, his earthly father, has died. It is unthinkable. It is offensive. It would be an affront to a man. To where when you have a wife, that somebody else will override you, your protection and care for your wife, and they would step in and take care of her. It would be insulting. Say, so, no, no, my wife is fine. The only way this would even be something that's feasible, especially to Jews, because family was very important, would be that the husband was dead. So we can understand from verses 26 and 27, in order for Jesus to put his mother Mary as he's at the foot of the cross to put her into the care of John the Baptist, excuse me, John, uh, uh, one of his disciples that he loved, to put her in his care. Joseph is no longer on the scene. We don't know how he died, but he's no longer there. He's probably died of natural causes. We don't know, but Joseph is dead. And Jesus put his mother in the care of John, the disciple whom he loved. But it even goes further than that. Out of all that he was going through, out of the agony, the pain, the shame, an excruciating pain, he still took time to care for his mother. His mother, excuse me. Shouldn't we take that note to take time for your mother? Shouldn't, shouldn't we do that? Let me tell you something right now. This is a very monumental thing that Jesus is doing. He sets a precedent for all of us, not just on Mother's Day, but in Mother's Day. I, I've always thought it to be such a, a difficult thing when you have two parents that can raise three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten children. And then when those parents get older, you can't get three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten children to take care of one parent or two parents. Listen, the same way they took care of us, it may be our turn to take care of them. Somebody, when mama can't do what she used to do, when mama don't have the strength that she used to have, 
When mama can't see like she used to see, she can't hop in a car and just drive at night and go to this place in the grocery store and pick up her own pills and pick up her own groceries. There ought to be somebody. There ought to be some children that love mama enough that say, listen, I'll do what mama can't do. My heart always goes out to people on these occasions who many are having difficult times. Some have strained relationships with their mother. Others, their mother is not even here anymore. And while they see you at home doing your thing and your mama need help and you ain't doing nothing, they look at you like, Lord have mercy, I wish. That, 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 take time today to whisper a prayer for the people whose mother is far away and they can't get to them. They, they, they want to travel. They just can't get to where they are, job and opportunities. And, you know, the career has pulled them away. Maybe they're in the military. They wish they could be home on Mother's Day, but they just can't. Whisper a prayer for them. Whisper a prayer for people whose mother is with them, but mama's not feeling well. Mama don't have the strength she used to have. Oh, man. And this is painful when you go through a photo album. And please, ma'am, please, sir, don't forget those whose mother that loved them and has fought a good fight and has finished her course. She's going on to be with the Lord now. Whisper a prayer for people in these situations who can't get to mama, who, who, whose mama may not be feeling good, whose mama is not with them anymore. Pray for them. Pray for them. And for those of you that got a bad relationship with your mama, let me tell you something. You better get that thing fixed. <laughs> you better get that thing fixed. Do what you can within your power. I, I, I have to say this. I want to give a full picture. Yes, there are mothers that have not been motherly. That does happen. That does happen. Yes, there are mothers that chose the clubs and chose drugs and chose a man over their own children. That does happen. That, that, that's a sadness. The fathers that do it too, but we're, we're on Mother's Day. So there are many, many variables that go into how a relationship can be strained. But just remember to pray for those that don't have that loving, bouncy, happy, visiting, phone call relationship with their mother. Pray for them. And we see a precedent that Jesus has said. He thought so much about his mama. He thought about humanity. He, he, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He, he, he thought about the world. All of us, past, present, and future. He's on the cross dying for my sin and yours, past, present, and future. He thought about us. But in the midst of all he was doing, running the universe, he still said, John, I'm putting my mama in your care. Take care of her. He made provisions for his mother. And let me tell you something right now. On this Mother's Day, remember your mother. Think about your mother. Pray for, pray with your mother. And enjoy this Mother's Day. Enjoy the fun times, the laughs. Remember the spankings, whoopings. <laughs> remember the tough love. Remember when you thought that hairstyle was pretty and your mama said, what in the world, girl, you looking crazy. Remember when you thought you could dress and they let you dress yourself the first time and you came out with all kinds of colors. We said how somebody's mother, their favorite color was all colors. Remember when you started dressing yourself, you thought you was cool and you came out with every color in the rainbow and your mama and them just laughed at you. Girl, what is you doing? Remember those lessons that your mother taught you. Remember how your mama would tell you about the Bible, take you to church. She tried to model it. She prayed with you. She prayed for you. Oh, baby, don't do that. No, no, baby, don't wear that. No, no, baby, it's not time yet. You have a chance to date. You have a chance to go to the movies, but but but, but not right now. Don't 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 run with them group of girls. They're, baby, just be careful with. Watch that boy right there, baby. Mm -mm. The boy gonna come to my house and won't even give me his name. Gonna give me his street name. Talking about his name is Big Mike and Lil G. Uh uh. You tell him don't come around here no more. If I can't know your name, if you can't give me the name your mama gave you, you can't come to my house, talk to my son and my daughter, oh, my daughter, excuse me. So yeah, remember these lessons, enjoy them, embrace them. And for those of you that are mothers, we want to say happy Mother's Day to you. But the greatest gift that has been given to every mother, it ain't the cake or the chicken or the food or the visitation. The greatest gift 
that God has already given to you was over 2,000 years ago. He had a son by the name of Jesus that came down and took upon himself human flesh. They called him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And guess what he did? For 30 years, he was in relative obscurity until one day at a wedding in Cana of Galilee, he came out and showed the world who he was by turning water into wine. After he did that, instantly he went to the temple and cleansed the temple. He took a whip and ran everybody out there. Get this junk out of my father's house. It should be called a house of prayer. Y'all done turned it into a den of thieves. Three and a half years later, he goes back and cleans the temple out one more time. This time he didn't use a whip. He used his words. And what did he get for it? Criticized, beaten, lied on and eventually hanging on the cross in John 19 and crucified. Put his mother in the care, made provisions for his mama. John, take care of my mama, I love her, watch out for her. He hung his head in the locks of his shoulder and he died. But early that third day morning, he rose from the grave with all power in his hand. He gave you the gift of salvation. And it is this Jesus that when you put your faith in him, we learned this morning in Sunday school, God gives you the earnest of the spirit. It is that spirit that God gives you that helped you as you were trying to raise your kids, helped you as you suffered, helped you if you had a bad work situation and you had to take off work because your son cutting up in school or your daughter don't want to listen and they get suspended and you ain't got nobody to watch them. Lord, how am I going to make it? Helped you with daycare when you couldn't afford daycare? It is that God that paved the way for salvation. With this, I'll end by saying happy Mother's Day. Enjoy this day to all these mothers that have sacrificed and loved and cared for and protected and defended and disciplined and raised. Happy Mother's Day to you. May the Lord bless you real good. I'm sure he can. I'm sure he will. For those of you with other situations, we're praying for you. My heart goes out to you. Every saint, every Christian, my heart goes out to you. We want to remember you in prayer. And let me tell you this. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I've been young and I'm now old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God has brought you from a mighty long way. And where you are is not where you're going. I am sure that the God that we serve has bigger and brighter things in store for you. So to all the mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. To those that have different circumstances and your smiles may be mingled with a few tears you have to fight back. Don't worry about it. God can and God will take care of you. So God bless you. Thank you for the fun and the games and the favorite colors and hobbies and gifts and the Bible trivia. And thank you for spending time with me as we go through John 19, verses 26 and 27. We can see Christ put a premium on taking care of parents, specific, specifically his mother. So I pray that you have a wonderful Mother's Day. And don't forget, Lord willing, Father's Day coming up too. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to go ahead and close with that. So happy Mother's Day to all of you, from me to all of you, and God bless you and may God keep you safe.